Good morning, and welcome to your daily Farm and Home Show, brought to you by the University of Kentucky Cooperative Extension Service. And now, here's your host. Good morning, and welcome to your Farm and Home Show. My name is Joanna Coles, and this morning we're visiting with Dr. Jeff Lim Cooler. He's with the University of Kentucky's Extension Beef Specialist there. Good morning, Jeff. Good morning, Joanna. Now, Jeff, one of the biggest costs for beef cattle production is feed and feedstuffs, and we're always looking to find maybe find one that might fit our operation better. And you've brought along one today that's had a lot of interest in Kentucky. Yes, as, as we look at that, you know, feed can represent 60 to 70 percent of our input costs, and so any way we can try to take advantage of local feedstuffs, uh, that helps us reduce the input costs and, and try to find a little larger profit margin. We are in bourbon country, and the bourbon industry has seen a relatively large uh, expansion in the last few years, and that's made more of our distillery byproduct feeds available locally here in the state. So I thought today we'd kind of go through those different feedstuffs because there's a lot of confusion and there's a lot of different products that are out there. Yeah, and there's a lot of di different variations and you've brought along a few examples here. Yes, yeah, so w typically what we start with is one that we call stillage. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the liquid that comes straight off of the steel and, and if you can see it's got a lot of water in it and the grain begins to separate out. Uh, but this would be our uh, one of the most available because if we can get the stillage uh, moved locally within a 15 mile radius or so, uh, that reduces the input cost on trying to evaporate the moisture out. Uh, some of our smaller craft distilleries that are beginning to come into different counties, they maybe don't have the infrastructure for dryers, mm -hmm. and so this is going to be more widely available today than it was, say, 10 or 15 years ago. Uh, but it does uh, have some limitations in yeah. the fact that there's a lot of water in this right. and we can't Transport Transportation, yes. and then uh, actually handling it once you get it to the farm, I would think would be challenging. That's right, and so we have to have handling tanks, uh, feeding systems, uh, you need some type of a trough that will hold water, or there's a limit on how much you can add to a TMR before it begins to start running out mm -hmm. of the TMR mixer. So we need to think about those handling uh, challenges that come along with a product like this. As far as nutritionally though? Nutritionally, these products are very uh, good. They're in the mid-20s on crude protein and near the energy value of corn. Hmm. So they're both a good uh, energy and protein supplement for our cattle and it can be used in feeder cattle and, and mature cows. The general recommendation that I would tell uh, producers as an upper limit uh, you don't have to feed this much, but typically is about one and a half gallons per hundred pounds of live weight. And again, that's because of the volume of water that we have here. Mm -hmm. Now, another product, if it goes through a centrifuge or some type of a screw press, we pull a lot of the water out and we're left with what we call wet distiller's grains, or in the industry it's often referred to as wet cake. Mm -hmm. So in the wet cake, again, a very high protein feed, uh, typically in the mid 25 to 28 percent crude protein range. Uh, a product like this is going to have near the same energy value again a corn or maybe even slightly higher if some of the solubles with the fat have been added back. Typically the moisture content on a product like this is going to be 25 upwards to around 40 percent. Mm -hmm. So much less water than what we have and we can transport this. However, shelf life can also be an issue and typically in the 80 to 90 degree weather, uh, we're looking at three to maybe seven days of shelf life. If we keep it covered, we can stretch that out to seven days. Um, but you'll begin seeing some mold. We did do a little demonstration at Princeton a few years ago, put it in the 4th of July week and kept it covered just like we would silage and it kept until September. Oh wow. But the fat does go rancid and it begins to have an odor to it. Um, however, there's no mycotoxins or we saw no mycotoxins in uh, that feed at that point in time. All right. So that's the wet cake. Mm -hmm. Then another product is, the liquid fraction that comes out of that centrifuge um, or screw press can go to an evaporator and we get what we call condensed distiller solubles. Tends to be high in fat, somewhere around 15 to 18 percent fat, so a great energy source. Protein is decent in the upper teens, mm -hmm. so not as high as the other products, but a great energy supplement for uh, looking at beef cattle uh, diets. It can be fed free choice in a trough. I typically recommend producers putting this into a lick tank, like the old molasses tanks that we had, and they can lick it out. Yeah. And then lastly, 
would be the dry distiller's grains that a lot of folks are com commonly Familiar using mm -hmm. in their calf rations and that. So this is the other product that we have. All right. Well, certainly appreciate you bringing us the information. We have a beef bash coming up, right? September 26th. That is correct. And we'd love to see everybody in Versailles. And you'll find out this and much, much more. So contact your local extension office for more information. Thanks for watching and have a great day. If you have questions about today's topic, please call the Warren County Extension Office at the number on your screen. Thanks for watching and have a great day.